Let's start with a woman who began working as a professional actor and comedian over 30 years ago. She's done stand-up, written a best-selling memoir and is currently seen on Winners and Losers. Let's be upstanding for the fabulous Denise Scott. <laughs> Scotty, we've known each other for years. We have. We've worked together for years, but nothing prepared me for the richness of these photos. Really? The early days. I'm excited to see them myself then. <laughs> Come on, let, well, this one is not you. No, this isn't me. Uh, well, my dad is in the middle there. <clears throat> <laughs> That's Russ, Scott. And they're his four brothers. He was the eldest of nine. But the interesting thing is it was his clown suit. Like, it wasn't that he hired it for the fancy <laughs> dress or... And the weird thing about that, he wasn't a clown, Brian. He, he couldn't juggle or, or... Or, obviously, he couldn't apply clown makeup. <laughs> I remember at the RSL picnic, he would offer his services. <laughs> and my mother and sisters and I would be watching him getting pummeled to death <laughs> by children. You know, they'd all be ripping his yeah. clothes off because he wasn't a trained clown. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> they'd all just jump on top of him and start ripping his clothes and Mum would just sit there like, oh, Russell, God. <laughs> that was her response. Who else is in the shot? Uh, Uncle Frank. He dressed as the hippie. Um, <laughs> Uncle Frank was a milkman who, on the side, sold Avon products. <laughs> Which is why, when he'd take my mother out to the theatre or something, yeah. my dad wasn't at all threatened. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Um, anyway, that's Uncle Doug. His big party trick was to uh, put our Persian cat, Fluffy, um, <laughs> under his arm backwards um, and then get her tail <laughs> and play her like a set of bagpipes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and once again, I saw... I knew this wasn't entirely normal behaviour, <laughs> but it happened at every... Fa the worst part was when my father... It was my 16th birthday party. Right. And the Borough Boys... Greensboro. Man, the Borough Boys. Still get yeah. my heart fluttering. Yeah, from Greensboro. <laughs> roughest guys in the hood chose my 16th birthday party to gate crash. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I was beside myself. <laughs> and Dad appeared in his clothes. <laughs> the thing was that, sadly... My father just stole Uncle Doug's trick with the cat and then walked around. <laughs> <laughs> this was my 60s. Oh. You're not allowed to swear on this show, are yes. you? Well, you can. Well, because then the borough boy who I fancied, this, this clown appears and he goes, who's that fucking mental case? <laughs> And, you said... and I, I said, well, well, that's my father. And um, <laughs> that was the end of that. The borough boys <laughs> left. But, and, and also, Uncle Len is still with us and he's, he's a joke teller. He... Uh, I'm just running. I, I haven't had enough sleep. Keep going. Um, <laughs> because now... Well, now I'll forget what... Anyway, I'm, about, I'm up to Uncle Len. Yes, so you keep I'll tell on. you. Because I've remembered that... This is a true story. When I was four years old... Um, I was at my nana's house and my sister and I were sitting on the back step. Yep. And my nana, their mum, said, what do you want on your sandwich, Denise? Peanut butter or Vegemite? And then she dropped dead. <gasps> and I, I never had the chance to say Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> A true story. She was 58. Wow. And then my dad was 59. So I'm coming up 57, so yes. I'm trying to do everything on my bucket list as quickly as possible. <laughs> but anyway, Uncle Len. Uncle Len. Uh, well, the heart attacks. I was performing in a comedy festival show and uh, Uncle Len had a heart attack during the show and he blamed my comedy. And <laughs> 
sort of good because he said I made him laugh so much that's why he had to be raced off to emergency right. with a heart attack. Anyway, he lived. So He's that's still a alive. Good story. But that was, yeah, that was... Denise um, Scott, yeah. one photo, one show. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, don't. Do not apologise for I'm wonderful sick. stories. Tell us about your mother and oh, what dear. she is doing and well, whereabouts. Can I put my glasses... I just need to see if she's got... Yes. You see, this was in the days... If you notice, this is Mum here. Uh, nurse. Now, they're in the tea room at the hospital. They're all smoking. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like, you could smoke on the ward, really. Yeah. Why not? Why oh, wouldn't you? And, uh, all the nurses smoke. And, in fact, Mum was a nurse's aide and I, that's not our house because we were across the road. Well, that's but, handy for your mum. Oh, it was very handy because Mum used to do night shift on her own. Right. A geriatric hospital. Yeah. And uh, so my dad delivered small goods for a living. He worked, you know, Stras and stuff. Yeah. So if one of the patients needed a doctor... Um, in the middle of the night or something, Mum would just call out to Dad. She wouldn't even have to phone. <laughs> and he'd put on his butcher's sort of coat, you know. It even had, like, a few blood stains and stuff. In it. And pretend... And he would pretend to be a doctor. And... <laughs> your dad. All right, let's get you and your sister, older sister, yes. Julie. Yes. Well, this was childcare in the 50s, really. <laughs> um... You know, Mum probably wasn't even home. They'd probably <laughs> gone out for the afternoon. And, uh, and your dad's delivery van? Yes, this was his first truck, cos we never had a family car. Right. He always had the company car for his small goods. And it was um, covered in, in uh, animated sausages <laughs> that wore boater hats. And they had oh, really? legs and tap shoes. Of course. And not only did it not have seat belts, of course, in it, it didn't have seats. <laughs> and so what they did was they put a lounge chair in for Mum. So it was quite solid, a solid, heavy. Yeah. And then Julie and I, I mean, look, at, we'd have, you know, the little uh, table and chairs set you have for yes. kids. Well, we'd have those little chairs in the back and we'd just have to hang on. For <laughs> dear life. To, to Mum and Dad's seat in the front. We'd just be <laughs> swirling around. <laughs> But we went to a circus and uh, right. Dad, so to go to the circus, he shouldn't have taken the work van, really. No. You weren't supposed But anyway, we always drove in it. So we go to this circus. I remember nothing about the circus at all. Nothing forgettable. But there was a storm. And when we came back, because we'd all parked in this paddock, all the cars were bobbed. And everyone else abandoned theirs, but because Dad had to use it for work the next day, Deliveries. he had to get it. So he said, you girls get in the van. So we get in and we're sitting there. And he said, I'll go back and get a shovel and I'll dig us out. And I'll never forget looking across this paddock and seeing my father returning, not with a shovel, but an elephant. <laughs> and it was like... <laughs> it was so... Like, you can magic. Magic. <laughs> Now, I don't know whether you've ever been face to face with an elephant, but because the elephant wrapped its trunk around the bumper bar and, like, I was like that <laughs> to, the, to the elephant and it sucked up the van, like, and it, with this van... Cos Dad was back in by then, there was a... And we are going up in the air in the van with, and it pulled us across the paddock and set us down. And my parents were just so... Underst like, Dad... I uh, would have said something like, you know, good night, Mum. <laughs> and Mum would have said, not bad, you know, and that would have been it. A trained elephant, or, or oh, trained in the art of uh, unbogging cars. <laughs> Brilliant. How remarkable. Oh, hello. Oh, look out. Well, <laughs> who would have thought that I would be Miss Junior Watsonia? <laughs> Was it, a, was it a big field that you were up against? I was up against my sister. 
<laughs> and Dad was thrilled that he didn't care who had won, just that one of his daughters. There was, oh, uh, well, I remember actually that I was number 22. But you see, this was the terrible thing. I honestly thought, wow, I am so awesomely beautiful. Like, I'm destined to just have such an amazing life <laughs> of fame and beauty, <laughs> beauty being the big thing. And I, I got ahead of myself and next, I went in another beauty, I went in for Miss Greensboro. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I took what? myself off. But by then, my eczema had broken out all over the face. What Nothing. Now, this is a, a, a Denise Scott that we may not necessarily uh, imagine. No, I did calisthenics for years. And, uh, and in fact, my dad used to drive the team in the back of his sausage van <laughs> <laughs> to competitions and stuff. It was right as... Because, you know, it, the back of the van... Would open. Yes. And we'd just hold on to one another's legs and hang out the back, <laughs> waving at the car behind us. But occasionally, Dad would take a corner really fast and the door would bang shut. <gasps> So Dad would be too... And we'd all be in the back screaming to my father, who wouldn't hear, cos he was in the front of the van. So we'd all just be in pitch blackness screaming. Suffocating. Yeah, suffocating. It was lucky we took out a prize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is... I've got to say, there's always one shot that tickles my fancy. That's uh, when I was 16 and uh, very reflective. Mm. Brian, dealing with heartache. At this oh. point, my first boyfriend, right. um, his big claim to fame uh, was that he was on the front of our local paper and the headline was, uh, Boy 14 Shoots at Police. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> which was a shock because... And this was true, he told me he was 15. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> he, yeah, he'd stolen a car and he was... You know, anyway, he got six months. So I used to visit him every Sunday, you know, like some mini Judy Moran or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I dropped, I dropped him uh, while he was in. Oh. Because I'd been to a party and Pash, do you still say Pash, yeah, Pash. anyway? Kissed another guy and he turned, he grew up, I only ever spoke kissed him that once, the drummer from ACDC. <laughs> oh, I knew that again. Uh, <laughs> Phil... Phil Rudd. Phil Rudd. Phil Rudovich. As, yeah. So wow. that was pretty exciting. You and, pashed the ACDC drummer. And I'm still talking about it. Of course. <laughs> 43 years later. Yeah. Oh, gee. All right. Now, we get to year 12... Do I point to yeah, myself? Yeah, well, point to yourself. That's me there. Uh, yeah, I loved Catholic girls' school. I loved yeah. all that. It was around about that time I decided I wanted to do something that involved university. And yeah. I had a lot of catching up to do because I hadn't been very academic yeah. and I was really striving to get there. And, uh, and we had... And biology I loved. And we had a change of teacher. And this guy arrived with an American accent, which, nothing wrong with that. No. And had he been a biology teacher, I think <laughs> that may have helped. <laughs> but he was a total charlatan. And he was off doing things with girls. It, it, can you say... It, anyway, well... At, <laughs> at the school. That involved a bit of smoking, you know, a bit of yeah. activity. And... Um, and what was he? Well, he was a truck driver. <laughs> and, I... And there was this scene where I have stood up in class and told the head nun that um, this man, he doesn't know anything about the topic and he heard me and came in and, like, confronted me and there was a bit of a... Wow. ..verbal stout. Stout. And he was never seen again. <laughs> he was taken in. And then the, the school principal, the nun, had a... literally had a nervous breakdown in front of me on the last day of school because I had to go and talk to her about this mishap. And, uh, and she just fell on the floor and started shaking and frothing. <laughs> and, and was carted off in an ambulance. And 
She was never seen again. <laughs> so we had all these teachers disappearing. And quite frankly, it wasn't looking good for me getting to uni. No. But you did. I did, yeah. And became a teacher. I did become a teacher. And yeah. we just so happened to have yes, your first year of teaching. Can you pick me from the kids? Um, <laughs> That's me there, and I, because I was the drama teacher, I, I decided we have a, a gypsy day. <laughs> Did you enjoy teaching? I adored teaching in Witchy Proof. It was amazing because, like, uh, we arrived there and the whole English department were first year out. Like, we were tw all 22, yeah. three of us. And we, I remember flipping a coin for who'd teach year 12. Who'd, who'd teach remedial? Just we had no idea. None of us. And uh, it was a marvelous time. Very free. You know, I only had four students in my year twelve English lit class, and I really loved teaching English literature. And but we used to smoke it, like, in the staff room. No, in the classroom. <laughs> the, because three of the girls smoked, the students, and I did. So we'd just sit there in the classroom <laughs> talking about William Blake. And, oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was brilliant. They were the days. Yeah. And what happened? What, what led you to leave teaching? Well, at the end of my first year there, I thought, I really do want to perform. Yeah. So I moved back to Melbourne. And I'd learned to drive in Witchy Proof. I think that's a crucial part to this story. I didn't realise cars came down the other side. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was in, um, in the city, living in the city, and uh, for some reason I went into oncoming traffic. I still don't know why. I'd, I veered over. I can hear someone laughing. That's rude. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, I and had, had a massive head on. And... At the point of impact, I had enough time to think, oh, God, I'm going to die. And I'm going to die a teacher. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's what I... And, and, and I was devastated. Yeah. Like, because I thought I haven't done what I want to do in life. And that's why I quit teaching. I took all my money and gave it to the woman whose car I'd written off. Yep. I had enough to buy her a car, and that was it. Cleaned out my account and... Uh, and you got out of teaching. Yeah. Well, the and school's loss was our gain. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Denise Scott.